Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out at Disney's Animal Kingdom. I'm looking at trying a couple new snacks around the park, including a grape soda flavored cupcake. That sounds so interesting. But also I wanted to ride some rides and also check up on some attractions that are actually being torn down at the moment. Anywho's, let's go do this. Take a look at this. We were just in time for Winged Encounters. I think it's gonna happen any second now. How magical would it be to see a sky filled with us? Oh boy. Oh! <laughs> Winged Encounters is only about a two minute presentation in front of the Tree of Life, but I love it because if you didn't know what was happening and you're just walking right by there, dozens of macaws actually just fly right next to your head and it's such a unique experience. I think we're gonna head right on into Dino Land USA. Like I said earlier, I wanted to check out an attraction that is sadly actually getting torn down at the moment back here. It's sad to see any Disney attraction getting teared down, but this one kind of really wasn't my favorite attraction. It's not that it wasn't a bad ride, it's just something I personally didn't like riding, and it looks like they've got a whole bunch of construction around it ready to tear it down. And here it is, the primeval world. Now this has been a long speculation that it was going away, but Disney recently filed a permit for construction, put up the walls, and uh, this really extincts. Isn't it funny that sign actually says that? This really extincts. And uh, like I said, it wasn't my favorite ride, uh, but I don't know, I'm not too sure what's gonna happen. Are they gonna tear it down? Or is it really just gonna become extinct? I don't know, maybe they might just replace it with another good ride. Let me know what you guys think about Primeval World in the comments. I figure Dino Land still has two attractions in it. It still has Dinosaur and it has the Triceratops Spin. So, I mean, two attractions in one land is possible. I mean, look at Star Wars. Uh, Galaxy's Edge only has two attractions, but one of them is Rise of the Resistance, so that's kind of a big deal. And since we're over here, before we go get ourselves some cupcakes and snacks, maybe I'll take a spin on Triceratops Spin. I mean, this ride actually is really fun. It's more like Aladdin's Magic Carpets than Dumbo. I only rode it for the first time not too long ago and I loved it. Also, because this ride is completely outside, we don't need to wear a mask while riding it. And I wonder if that's the same thing for Kilimanjaro Safari. We're gonna have to find out because that's really interesting. No water in the Triceratops spin though. Looks like it's all dried up. And we are lucky number three. Dino number three. Now if you go in the front, it raises it up. And then I think the back actually tilts it like this way. So each way is actually a different function. I, I don't know if I pointed that out. That's the same way with Aladdin's magic carpets. But of course, I'm gonna sit up front because I wanna go all the way up. I wanna go all the way up. Whoa! <laughs> that really started off very, very fast. That's the way. <laughs> oh, and look at, oh wow. The views up here are really, really nice. I love it. Oh, little meteors too. And you can actually just sit back and take this one to actually tilt you a little bit. Woo! <laughs> that is so awesome. All right, let's bring her down. Bring her down now. <laughs> I know it's a kid ride, but this is really, really fun. I really do like these kind of rides. I love Dumbo and I love the magic carpets. It's, it's fun and I like the music too. We're coming down. Oh, we're going up. Nope, nope. Oh boy. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And now I think it's time we go get ourselves the cupcake that I've been looking forward to. A grape soda cupcake now it's actually a grape soda flavored cupcake custard in the center and it's from the movie up i mean if you've seen the grape soda pin and i'm excited like i said i i, I like to try things that are unique and kind of strange i'm not the biggest fan of cupcakes but this one definitely has something special about it we're gonna have to head back out to Discovery Island because I think it's at Flame Tree Barbecue. I'm not too sure, it's either there or maybe they're at multiple spots. It's a part of a badge series of cupcakes. All right, I found my seat and I got my cupcake and now it's time to dive into this and it is very pretty. It's a very pretty purple cupcake. 
It says it's a vanilla cupcake with grape soda flavored custard filling, grape soda flavored frosting, an edible chocolate grape soda badge medallion, which is right there. And uh, yeah, I think we're gonna have to cut it open first because I want to see what it looks like on the inside, but I have to get the paper off. This is gonna be a struggle. It always is a struggle with these. Uh oh. I bet you that icing is really messy. I noticed they gave me a nap, uh, wet nap with it. All right, here we go. Tear. Oh, wow. Oh, look at it. It's so pretty in there. Look at that. Oh, this is really cool. I might like this one a lot. Uh-oh. We're going to lose it. I'm trying to be so graceful, but it's not happening. Oh, success. Look at that. All right. Now we're going to cut right down the middle here. Nope. Oh. There's like popper. Oh no, I lost my medallion. I just butchered half of that cupcake. I lost my grape soda medallion. Oh well, gonna have to move that to the side there. And now I've got icing all over my hands. <laughs> I'm glad they gave me that little wet nap. But look at that, I was not expecting all of this inside of this cupcake. So <laughs> now that we saved one side of it, there we go. That's the side we're gonna be eating off of. It's like cupcake down. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, it is Pop Rocks. <laughs> Pop Rocks inside of a cupcake. That is really awesome. And I can taste grape soda. It literally tastes like grape soda. Wow. I mean, this is super, super sweet, and the cake isn't that great, but the cupcake is fun to eat. Like, this is really fun to eat because you get that grape soda flavor, the Pop Rocks popping like crazy. I like this. I really, really like this. Holy moly. Seriously, the best part about this cupcake, though, is the uh, grape soda custard in the center here. That's this stuff right here and the Pop Rocks. I can go without the icing. I mean, icing is okay, but it, I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. Oh boy, a messy cupcake though. The thing with cupcakes is usually there's just big glob of icing on the top and you always end up with more icing than you do cupcake. But this is a funny little experience and kids probably love it. Especially the fact that you can actually add little Pop Rocks in there. Pop Rocks, Pop Rocks inside the cupcake. <laughs> it is fun. Sadly, we're gonna have to say goodbye to the second half of the cupcake. Now it's time to move along. There are three different other cupcakes for the badges. They have the Flamingo one here and a couple of other ones. I think one at Restaurantosaurus. But I don't think I can actually make a full day of eating like four cupcakes. That'd be a lot, you know what I mean? I couldn't even eat all of that one. Half of it landed on the table and I was like, well, I wasn't missing out on much because like I said, there's so much icing on top that you just get full up real quick. And plus, I do want to get something to eat a little bit later on, like an actual meal meal. Like I said, I'm interested in getting some dinner later, maybe at Satuli Canteen or at the Yak and Yeti Quick Service. Oh, hi friends, how are ya? Oh. Like I said, I wanna get something to eat, but I do wanna wait a little bit because I wanna ride some rides, and plus I just ate half of that cupcake. I do love me some Satuli Canteen. I love some grilled chicken and red potato hash. I mean, oh man, that sounds so good right now, but I get it all the time. And I've never really tried the Yak and Yeti Quick Service, and I don't know. It's like, try something new or stick with something that is just really, really good. We're gonna have to think about it. Until then, I think we should go ride Expedition Everest. There she is, Expedition Everest. And take a look down here. It looks like they're putting things together for the kite show that's actually gonna start here at Animal Kingdom. A new nighttime show that's starting on the 50th anniversary. And I'm excited. I mean, I would come here and check that out, but Harmonious and then the new fireworks show at Magic Kingdom. I feel like this one has fallen to the wayside. Not too many people are gonna be here at night, but you could do this and technically go do Epcot and see Harmonious in the same day. Huh, that sounds like a challenge actually. Now, I'm just assuming if the show starts at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, you definitely would have time enough to get from here to Epcot to see Harmonious, like, debut. I mean, it ah, definitely seems like a risk though. I'd rather uh, stick out a good spot for Harmonious. 
we'll take a peek see at the wait time they do have a single rider line so we can always hop in that if we wanted to it says 15 minutes for a standby I think we'll do standby because I'd like to request a uh, front row or a back row. If you do single rider, there's no request. Like you just go wherever they need the single rider. So 15 minutes, definitely worth the wait. This ride is considered indoors, so you gotta wear a mask actually on it. And I think we're going back row. Definitely don't want to lose this bad boy, but I can never fit it in the bags. So I always feel bad, so I'm just gonna have to hold on to it or like let my knee hold on to it. Or I can just leave it on and then when we get to the drop, I just put my head on my hand. My hand on my head. <laughs> Expedition Everest is always one of my favorite rides and it's set to actually go down for I think three months in January So is it possibly like is it possible that we could be getting the Yeti back? I mean that would be really really amazing if you guys don't know the Yeti actually used to be able to move and swing at you Now it's actually stationary and it's uh, basically like a strobe like effect or what they call disco Yeti But I don't know if three months is enough time. Let me know in the comments what you guys think I feel like they would need more than three months to actually fix the Yeti. Another thing they recently announced, including the closure of Expedition Everest for three months, is the Finding Nemo show is uh, actually going to be rethemed, and they're going to have a new show. And I like that, but I hope that most of the performers are there. That one was a really cool show because I love seeing all the gigantic puppets. I think those were, that was like one of the coolest appeal to it. You know what I mean? So hopefully it is heavily relied on performers, and I hear rumors that there might be some screens and stuff at it, and I'm hoping that's not the case but we'll see you know we always just wait and see earlier I was talking about getting something to eat at either Sautuli Canteen or the quick service at Yak and Yeti the local food cafe but I think we're gonna have to check out the Yak and Yeti's menu first before I decide on it. like I know what I'm gonna get at Sautuli Canteen but let's just see what they have maybe maybe there's gonna be something that pops out and catches my eye Looks like they've got some honey sesame chicken, sweet and sour tempura shrimp. Oh, you know what? I have eaten here before. I've had the Korean fried chicken sandwich and it was okay, but it was nothing amazing. It was no saltui canteen. So I think I'm just going to go with uh, what I like and maybe get myself uh, some saltui canteen. One day I'll come back and try something different from here. Maybe if I do, it would be the tempura shrimp or the American Kobe cheeseburger. But I love saltui canteen. I really like that idea because then we can also see what the wait time for Flight of Passage is and Navi River Journey and just kind of enjoy Pandora. But before we do that, I did want to stop and do Kilimanjaro Safaris only because it's a five minute wait. I mean, it's not only because of that, but you can't walk by the safari if it's a five minute wait and not go on it. Look at that. 
like I said, you can't pass up a five minute wait for Kilimanjaro safaris. And you don't even have to wear your mask, it's optional. So since this is a fully outdoor ride and you're just kind of walking through the huts here, you uh, don't have to wait with your mask on. It looks like nobody is waiting to ride. They just have <laughs> everything just right. Oh, look, we got some people there. This is really awesome though. Here she comes, Simba One. Look at how empty our safari is. I put an Easter main fully and completely the entire duration of the safari. That doesn't include if we stop to look at an animal. Are the only living relatives? It also looks like it's feeding time. And we can tell that the okapi and the giraffe are really. Now, bongo, both male and female, the bongo have are eating. Horns, so it's a little harder to tell the difference with black rhino. Look at the um, black rhinos. There's one right there. Rock, so I'm going to come up a little further and, and then, take a look holy at this one moly. on the left-hand side along the wall back there. Now, black rhinos are more solitary and a little more active at nighttime, um, so, which means they cannot generate their own body heat or maintain their own body temperature like humans can. So in order for them to warm up, they'll lay out in the sun. And in order for them to cool down, they'll head into the water or open those gigantic mouths of theirs and release the heat. Now, if you take a look to your left-hand side, it might be a little hard to see over the bush, but please do still stay seated. Um, in front of the den, there is a spotted hyena walking around. Now, spotted hyenas are pretty cool. Their hierarchy isn't quite based like other animals are. They have a female-based hierarchy. So she's going to cross the road real quick, so we're going to let her cross the road. Um, now, Patterson's elands are the largest antelope species. The male can stand up to six feet tall at the shoulder. Giraffe hanging out over here. Now, a tower is what a group of giraffe together is called. Now, these specific ones are Maasai giraffe. Maasai giraffe. I have are never known seen this many giraffes. Spots that they have. One, two, really three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, shape. twelve giraffes. Now, giraffes are the tallest land mammals. They can get up to twenty feet tall when they're full grown. The tallest one on the reserve is around nineteen feet tall. Now, there are also some white rhinos walking around over here. Now, white rhinos get their name from the African term, white, which means wide. It uh, doesn't mean white. It's just bushes to the right of the white rhinos on the right-hand side. There's some water bucks back there. There's also some ostriches on the right. -hand. Largest flightless birds, but they still have wings. So instead of using them oh to fly, they use them to help them steer when they're going 35 miles an hour. Now, those... That was such a great safari. So many of the animals were out and about. I loved it. And that one time, well, that one part where the white rhino like was like right next to me, I was speechless. I didn't even know what to say. I kind of was just recording it. And then it just crossed behind us. So it was like five o'clock. And if that's the time they feed them, I highly suggest coming at feeding time because everybody was out eating and it was so much great. It was, it was an amazing safari. When we got off, I noticed that, look at this. We found a poacher's vehicle. Look at all the tusk in the back there. I didn't even know they still had this here. A long time ago, it was actually a ride that was actually warning people about poachers and everything like that, and they ended up taking it away. But look at right there, whole bunch of tusk right in the back of the vehicle. Now it's time for dinner. Now it's dinner time, and I am pumped. I'm definitely gonna get myself the red potato hash. I don't know if I'm gonna get half roast beef and half grilled chicken, but man, oh man, I love South Sui Canteen, and maybe a little dessert too. And here we are, and I am excited. We're gonna create our own bowl, and I think I can get the combination uh, roasted, sliced, grilled beef and chicken. We'll do that, because I like a little chicken and a little beef. Uh, but you could get shrimp or crispy fried tofu, and then you pick your base between rice and black beans, red and sweet potato hash, which I love, noodles or salad, and then you pick your sauce between green onion vinaigrette, black bean vinaigrette, or creamy herb dressing and I think I'm gonna try the onion vinaigrette but on the side definitely on the side for that one and then maybe a dessert we'll see I'm not too uh, fancy about the blueberry cream cheese mouse mouse moose huh I might want to get the chocolate cake because I know that's banana filling on the top and I love a little banana 
I placed my order and now it's ready and it looks so so good and I actually got something a little extra that I didn't know I could do and now I'm excited here is the combination roast beef and grilled chicken with the red potato hash and I got the onion vinaigrette on the side but also I noticed that I could order the noodles as a side and it was $4. They don't give you many noodles though for $4, but I really wanted to try them in case I ever wanted to try the noodles as my base instead of the red potato hash. So I decided on getting those and then also this little fancy drink. I was super thirsty and it's a Pandorian Sunrise. It's non-alcoholic and I don't know. I mean, it just looks really good. I know it has melon Powerade in it and it comes with a little pineapple on there. So we got a nice little feast here. First things first, I'm gonna try the noodles. Look at that. Just in case I do like them, I'll know in the future to actually get them as my base. But I wonder if they're as good as Ohana. I don't know, I don't know how to really... Oh, I gotta twirl them around a little bit more. There we go. <laughs> That's still a pretty big bite. We're gonna try to knock some off there. Ooh, okay, here we go. Definitely not as good as Ohana noodles. I mean, they're pretty decent, but I think I'll stick to my red potato hash because that is just too good. Look at that. It's got red potatoes and sweet potatoes on there, and I love it. Now I want to try the Pandorian Sunrise. Ooh, that is really refreshing. I like that a lot. Oh, wow. Very good, but it's not refillable. That's only sad part. So I could drink this like in probably two sips. It's not like a big cup either. And it was $5, but seriously very refreshing. But now it's time for the main event. A little bit of chicken, a little bit of roast beef. Oh, nope. Yep, there we go. And a little bit of potatoes. Gotta get it all in one bite. The perfect combination, because it's an actual combination. Get it? Honestly though, I think I said that the last time I got this, the thing that stands out the most to me is the red potato uh, hash. Like this is so, so good. I would literally just eat the potatoes and not get anything else. It is that good. But add a little grilled chicken and roast beef to it. Makes it a little bit better. I'm gonna stick with saying that this is my favorite way to build a bowl here. I think next time I'm gonna see if I can get a side of rice and beans and see what it's like. But until then, just the way I like it, this way. Also, I wouldn't mind trying the shrimp either. It looks pretty good. The shrimp and noodle combination might be a much better combination. And the noodles, I'm not too sure if it's because I didn't put any sauce on them, but Ohana noodles don't have any sauce either. Those just seem super dry and not much of a taste of them at all. It's not like I didn't like them. It's just nothing that was just like, bang. You know what I mean? Nothing. It did not have that Ohana effect or any other noodles or like uh, the noodles that Teppanito, oh, to die for. I'm not a big fan of the boba balls though. I don't know why. I just don't think they belong inside this dish. And so I kind of pushed them to the side over there. Do you see them? You know, let me know what you guys think, but boba balls can stay out of my food. <laughs> hit the spot. I decided on not getting dessert because I got those noodles so I figured that was just a, that was kind of like my dessert but my appetizer at the same time and now maybe we'll go explore and see what the wait times are here in Pandora. I'd like to see what flight of passage is. I hear rumors that it's been like 10 minutes but I mean we'll have to look when we get there and uh, maybe we can ride one. I don't know we'll see how it goes. Oh well it says 25 minutes that's not too bad but I think we'll check to see what Navi River is like. Sometimes Navi River could be longer than Flight of Passage. So I'm hoping that's not the case today. Still though, 25 minutes for Flight of Passage is a really good wait time. And Navi River looks like it's 15 minutes. Maybe, I can't read, but we have to see when we get up there. 15 minutes for Navi River. That's not too shabby. So I think we're actually gonna go ride that instead. Actually, on second thought, I think we are going to abort that idea. It uh, started raining. I can feel the raindrops happening. The sky is getting a little dark. 
and we've been here for a pretty good time today. We've been here a while, uh, so uh, I think I'm just gonna call it a day and try to get to the car without getting a downpour on. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. I definitely made the right decision because it is about to be a downpour on Animal Kingdom. I feel good about that. I finally was able to beat the rain.